A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, you, son of man, I have appointed watchmen for the house of Israel. When you hear me say anything, you shall warn them for me. If I tell the wicked, O wicked one, you shall surely die. And you do not speak out to dissuade the wicked from his way. The wicked shall die for his guilt, but I will hold you responsible for his death. But if you warn the wicked, trying to turn him from his way, and he refuses to turn from his way, he shall die for his guilt, but you shall save yourself. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, owe nothing to anyone except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not covet. And whatever other commandment there may be are summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no evil to the neighbor. Hence, love is the fulfillment of the law. The word of the Lord.
and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Dominus Fobiscum. Lexio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Mateum. Jesus said to his disciples, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have won over your brother. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you so that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell the church. If he refuses to listen even to the church, then treat him as you would a Gentile or tax collector. Amen, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, amen, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything for which they are to pray, it shall be granted to them by my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Verbum do homini. Today in the second reading from Romans, we have Paul's teach, teaching and, and echoing what Christ said in the Gospels, that we are to love one another, that to love is the fulfillment of the law, to love God and to love our neighbor as ourselves. Today, uh, the church in Poland is beatifying a beautiful family, the Ulma family, and they lived in Markova, it's a rural village in Poland, southeast, near the border of the Ukraine. And at the time of World War II, there was about 120 Jews in the village, something like 40, 500 people in the village as a whole. And it was uh, Joseph Ulma and his wife, uh, Victoria, we had a small farm. <clears throat> he was a, a beekeeper. I think he even harvested silkworms. He was an amateur photographer. They'd both done some local acting. She had done some work at a university. She did some schooling at a university. They had six children in nine years, all under the age of nine in 1944. <clears throat> this is four years into the German occupation of Poland. And they were hiding a family of Jews, eight Jews. They were hiding on their farm just outside of town. So their children were between two years old and eight, and plus she was pregnant with another. And they were hiding eight Jews. So March 24th, 1944, the German police were trying to, you know, there was, it was a capital punishment to hide Jews, so they were trying to drive out all the Jews, and in the early morning hours, after housing the Jews for a year and a half, uh, they came early in the morning and murdered the entire family. First killed the parents in front of the children, and then they shot the children, between eight and two years old, and also the unborn child in the womb of Victoria. And the church 
considers this family to be martyrs, you know, in charity. Their Bible was found in the home. It was, it was open to the passage of the Good Samaritan. It was underlined in red. Another section underlined in red was love one another, I have loved you. <clears throat> And, you can, and because he was a photographer, there's a lot of pictures of the family you can find online. And the, the power of their witness is so striking, you know, to do something so brave and daring, you know, in this position of great vulnerability, you have your own family. You're not, you do not have great means. Their witness just stands out even more of love God and love neighbor. They were a devout Catholic home. And we see this growing devotion to the Ulmas, you know, in asking for their prayers and intercession. So today, they, that family's being beatified in Poland. The popes have written that the new evangelization is inseparable from the Christian family. It largely depends on it. The family there is, you know, the children, the parents that rooted in baptism and receives, the, for, the, for the parents, receives a new strength from the, the sacrament of holy matrimony. That the family can share in the mission, you know, of the church by being a sacrament of Jesus' love. It's an image of Jesus' in a real participation and Jesus' love as bride, bridegroom for his bride, the church. Pope Benedict would say that it's a particular realization of the church. The family is grafted into the mystery of the church, reflects this love of Jesus for his church. So the family receives loves, love and gives love to others, not just about themselves, but opening that place of communion and life and love to other people in service to the church. St. Paul VI would say, the family, like the church, ought to be a place where the gospel is transmitted and from which the gospel radiates. Transmitted, the spouses love each other, love and educate, raise, raise up their children. So it's transmitted there, but also radiates to the surrounding culture and society. St. Augustine would write, if you see charity, yes, indeed, you see the Trinity. Where there is love, there is God, and to put another way. That reception and transmission of divine love. We see that in the mutual commitment of the spouses, in their generous and responsible procreation, their care, education of the children, and their work and social relationships, attention to the needy outside of their family, and church activities and civil activities as well. In short, as many popes have written, the family is an indispensable foundation of society and vital community for the journey of the church foundational cell of all society and a vital community for the journey of the church. You know, that we, we need fellowship. We need places of communion. And that happens in the family and the, and the family opening itself up to others. We see that the family witnesses and makes present, present uh, the love we see of God for us in the Eucharist. By seeing a loving family within and without, so to speak, we see something of the love of God for humanity itself. As I mentioned yesterday, you know, the newness of the New Testament is Christ himself, that the word becomes flesh, goes in search of the stray sheep, the prodigal son parable, the lost coin, the shepherd, you know, that goes off to bring back that one sheep. The Old Testament imagery for the relationship of God and Israel is a bridal one, a nuptial one, this mystery of marriage that the father 
loves Israel as a bride. And that's taken to a new realism in Jesus Christ. Paul would speak of, you know, we share this one bread and it makes us one body. It brings us together. The many are made one, united in Christ. So he's giving himself to us. He's loving us. And when we love him in return, we're also loving all those he's joining himself to. So the Eucharist is affecting this communion with everyone. Union with Christ is also union with those he gives himself to, you know, in the Eucharist especially. Communion with him and others, it's happening at our Mass. So this commandment of love is not just a moral thing. As St. John says, we were first loved by him. So we're giving what we receive. It's, pos it's made possible because we've received God's love. So love of God and love of neighbor is united in Christ in this sacramental way, in this very real way. Pope Benedict XVI would say that it's a sacramental reactualization of what Jesus did and coming after us as his stray sheep and uniting himself to us, the Eucharist makes that present. So this challenging commandment of love that Paul is echoing here from Jesus, it can be a commandment because it has first been given. And we can't look at it as just a moral commandment because we can't do it of our own strength. We need God's love. I've seen that as a priest. You know, maybe someone makes a, an act of forgiveness that you hear about. And, and I, I remember in particular thinking, boy, that's, that doesn't come from our, our weak flesh. That doesn't come from our fallen human nature. That's God operating in the person to have that kind of mercy and forgiveness. So Pope Benedict writes, no longer is it a question then of a commandment imposed from without and calling for the impossible, but rather of a freely bestowed experience of love from within, a love by which its very nature must then be shared with others. We receive this love. You, you cannot not share it. It's got to come out of us. If all this stuff that we say is true about the sacraments, we can't keep it to ourselves. Love grows through love. Love is divine because it comes from God and unites us to God through this unifying process that makes us a we, which transcends our divisions and makes us one until in the end, God is all in all. So yes, the newness of the New Testament is that God comes down and is transforming us, giving us grace, that we are adopted by that grace, drawn into his family, united to him. And even in the most horrific circumstances, as we see with the Ulma family, you know, living in a Nazi-occupied country, they protect high Jews for a year and a half, the whole family is wiped out. They are giving themselves in this unbelievable charity. They're considered martyrs. They're being beatified today. What a witness for us. May we uh, respond to that love of Christ has been poured into our hearts through the gift of his Holy Spirit and through our sacramental life.